Hey everybody and welcome back. Today in this video we're going to be looking at some more important formulas that are in the handbook for us as we're studying for our civil FE exam and today we're going to be looking in the statics section. So right now I am in the um, handbook, the NCES handbook and today we're going to be looking at specifically resultant of force systems so very important section as you're studying statics so i want to show you how i first got here so we'll start uh first you should have your reference handbook downloaded and this will be your cover and then from there you want to use your bookmarks click your bookmarks and then you want to scroll down to the bottom to the appendix FE exam specifications, click civil. And by the way, I'm using Google Chrome to do this. So um, I always open my handbook in Google Chrome just because it helps me to search and it moves really fast, which is nice. All right. So um, yeah, resultant of four systems. All right. So what section in the handbook is this going to actually be in? Well, it's going to be under statics. So we can use our bookmark again and go under statics and click statics. All right. And so the first section in it is going to be something that's called a resultant. Okay. So what is a resultant? A resultant is when basically you're, you're looking at forces and these forces are acting in different directions. So you may have one force, pointing to the right, one force pointing to the left. And so from that, there is a result that comes about. There's a final, there's a final force or a resultant force that is a certain, has a certain magnitude and we want to be able to determine, or we want, we're going to want to be able to determine that resultant. And so there's a few things that we need to note here. Resultant force is denoted by F here. Um, and you have forces for, you can have one force, you can have three forces, you can have 10 forces. Ultimately, what you're going to want to do with these is split them into their X and Y components. Um, and then you will be able to get the magnitude of it or the final um, result of the force by using this equation. So what is this saying? It's just saying F is equal to the sum of the forces in the X direction squared plus the sum of the forces in the Y direction squared all over the square root, which is denoted by the one half. Now, what does this particularly look like? Well, um, if you remember from our vector section, we know that a force can have, let's say it's 53 in the uh, X direction, 20 in the Y direction, and 10 in the, uh, or we, we don't have a Z direction in this case, so it's just your X and Y. So you're gonna take that, and you're gonna use the X component, you're going to add them up. So you may have a, uh, from force one, you're going to have, you know, how many ever forces there are in the X, you're going to add those forces up. And so it's important that you note. so we're, we're just looking at this piece here, all right, the sum of those forces. So I'll give, I guess I can do an example or just show you what those might look like. So two forces, um, or I'll just look up resultant. Okay. So it might look something like this, where you have um, a four Newton applied to the right and then two Newtons applied with an angle of 45 degrees. So this uh, two Newton, I mean this four Newton, is going to have uh, it's four newtons in the uh, x direction, right? 
and then in the y direction that is zero for this particular force so you have that and then you have your two newtons and so you need to take into account its angle so you would break this up into its x and y component so you would have two and then it would be where what they say be two cosine 45 for the x and then to come up it would be two sine 45. now the important piece of this is when you're doing the sum of these this this two newtons it points to the right which means it is a positive x value now if it pointed to the left then that x would be negative so when you're taking the sum of you're doing the sum of the x you may have one force that is a positive value you may have another force that is a negative value and you want to add those up and take into account their signs and then square them right um so just important to note now there's also the resultant direction which is a little bit different it's just it's going to be the angle um, that the result um, creates. So um, you're able to do this by finding arctan. This in your calculator is going to be tan inverse uh, negative one. So um, if you say tan inverse of negative one, I just want to show you what it kind of looks like on a calculator so, so this is how it's written just that tan of negative one so that's the same it's the same thing as uh tan to the negative one arc tan is the same thing and then you have some of the forces in the y okay and then over some of the forces in the x so similar concepts here, but if you notice, it's not squared. Um, it's not over the square root. So a little bit different here. Um, other things. So you could determine uh, if you're dealing with angles, right? Earlier we were saying that, hey, this is, um, cosine theta or sine theta well the sum of the force in the x direction is going to always be equal to the force cosine of theta x what is theta x well it's your angle from the x axis so if you see this f y it's the angle from the y axis so those are you want to make sure that you know the difference because um, while you could just, typically I like to use some of the force in the X direction is equal to F cosine theta. And then I like to say the sum of the force in the Y is equal to F sine theta of X. And so it, it's, a, it's a little bit different, but it's the same, it'll give you the same answer if you try both. Um, so you just want to be aware of that. Um, this is just rearranged to solve for cosine of cosine theta of X. And if you just want theta, you can do cosine inverse of this whole thing. You should be able to get. Theta. So they, they can ask you a few different ways to be able to get these. Um, but yeah, this is resultant forces. It's definitely going to be X. Um, there's a, they can put a few different forces on a um, X and Y coordinate system and get you to solve. They could also ask you for your angle or your resultant direction. So just pay attention to these terms. Um, and it notice it's with respect to the X axis. Um, but yeah, this is what, this is what they can ask you. So hopefully this helps do some examples and some further videos um, and you can always check out the guide for extra practice problems but other than that hopefully this is helpful and i will see you in the next video
Peace.